Hey, this is Bill here at PowerStrokeHelp.com with Tom Brown, Certified Lubrication Specialist. Did I get it right this time? You did. Okay. Today we're going to talk about differentials. Uh, it's probably the single most neglected and forgotten about part on a uh, PowerStroke diesel truck. Most people ignore it because it is a, a long service duty on the, the fluids in the differential. According to Ford's specification, it's a 100,000 mile service interval with their fluid. This is assuming a couple things. That you're, number one, not overloading the vehicle, that you're not running any tune bigger than stock, and that you are operating the vehicle within the parameters of its design, which a lot of people, not, not everybody, but a lot of people don't do that. The other thing that's crucial about these differentials is that you have to run the right fluid. I can't tell you how many I've seen, and I should do a video about it, where they come in where the, they, somebody's used old school 90 weight gear oil to try to save a buck, because this, this oil is expensive. Uh, and they, they come in with the old 90 weight and they put it in there and it just turns to glue because of the type of heat. Heat is the key here. Uh, the, and I'm not going to go into, the, into everything that Tom's going to talk about here, but, but overloading the truck creates heat. Uh, running more tune creates heat. Running the truck on a hot day, of course, will, will not allow it to dissipate heat out of the differential. All of these things contribute to destroying a rear end. And most people don't pay any attention to their rear end until the things, it, literally the, the, the drive shaft is hanging on the ground or the thing starts howling or, or there's fluid dripping out of the front seal. All of these things are avoidable. All of these problems are avoidable with a differential if you service the vehicle correctly and run it within specification. There's different, sizes, there's different sizes of differentials. Most people think that you know, an F450 has this huge gear in it. Part of it is, is because it is a stronger gear, the truck is ready to, to, to pull more weight. But it also has to do with the bigger gear allows it to stay cooler. It, it, stays, it, it dips into the oil and it, and, it, and it rotates through the oil and keep, actually stays cooler because it's bigger. It dissipates the heat more efficiently than a smaller one. There's different sizes differentials in all of these trucks. 250, 350 have, are, are basically one class of differential. And then you go to the 450s that, that are completely different design, designed to carry heavier loads and run cooler. Well, Tom's going to explain all of this to you. Uh, I'm going to pass the, the baton to Tom. Thank Thanks, you, Bill. Tom, for coming out and helping the Power Stroke community understand a little bit more about their truck and how to take care of it. Thank you much, Bill. Okay, where I want to start with today is a circular diagram that explains thermal runaway. Uh, and thermal runaway is what happens when you increase the load on a differential or any type of a gear system and the heat builds up. So let's start up here at the entry point. As load increases, and load increases by one of these several things up here. When you increase the weight in the truck, when you increase your speed, when you increase power going to the rear differential, when you increase the air temperature outside, or when you decrease the air flow over the differential, which allows it to cool better. Any and all of those things will cause load to increase in your differential. As that load increases, the first thing that happens is your oil temperature in the differential increases. As the oil temperature increases, the oil gets thinner. As the oil gets thinner, you have increased friction and wear. As you increase friction and wear, you have another increase in oil temperature. And just like before, as that oil temperature increases again, the oil thins out even more. As the oil thins out even more, you're right back into another round of increased friction and wear, and this thing just circles around and around. And as you continue to load it, this begins to spin faster and faster as the oil keeps thinning out. Eventually you will lead to gear failure. Uh, and so that's what we're trying to avoid here today. So the way you avoid that is with proper maintenance of your rear differential, proper, including proper fluid, and operating the vehicle within the parameters as it was designed for, unless you have made modifications to account for that by putting in a larger differential or coolers or things like that. But you cannot just add more power to your truck and think, hey, it'll pull it, and think that you're not having a dramatic negative effect on your differential. If you upgrade the engine, you have to take into account the fact that you're going to, and you're going to load it uh, to the maximum capacity, you've got to make adjustments in other places. 
So you may have to put in a, differ, a, a larger differential. You may have to put in a cooler for that. Um, but mainly you need to stop towing things with an F-250 that an F-650 was designed for. I see them every day. I live here in the Atlanta area uh, where Bill lives, and I just saw one coming over here this morning. An F-250 weighted down, rear bumper almost dragging the pavement, black smoke blowing out of it. Guy had this thing completely loaded, huge trailer on the back. Every part of that truck was overloaded. And all of that stress was being absorbed by his rear differential. So if he keeps doing that, he's going to have gear failure in that rear differential. The next thing I want to show you is what happens uh, to these gear oils as they get subjected to stress, and in this case we're talking about a shear test. Shearing is when two gears come together and actually split that oil at the molecular level, and they split it apart, uh, and the, basically, the oil basically falls apart in two pieces and it's no longer able to lubricate and cool like it was designed to do. And so this is, we're looking at an SAE 90, and this is the KRL 20, 20 hour shear test. This is a lubrication industry standard test to evaluate gear oils and how well they can uh, stand up to a shear. And over here on the side is the viscosity. And these are measured in centistokes, which is an industry standard measurement for viscosity. Uh, don't worry about that. Just know that as you go up this line, the oil is getting thicker. As you come across the bottom, we're talking test hours. This is a 20 hour test. So for an oil to pass this test, it has to stay in its intended range. Uh, it has to start in that range and end in that range. And today that range that we're talking about is SAE 90. And SAE 90 is slightly above the 18 cinestokes over here and it's slightly below the 15. That's the range on SAE 90. SAE 90 is not a single viscosity, it is a viscosity range. So the, the bottom dash mark here is the, the floor and the top dash mark is the ceiling for SAE 90. So as you start off over here, we have a blue oil, a red oil, and a green oil. The first thing I want you to notice is the manufacturer of the blue oil cheated to begin with because he knew he was going to have a problem with this test and so he formulated his oil above the ceiling for SAE 90 hoping that he could get to the end of the test without failing. So he's already failed because he's too thick at the start. The red oil starts off in range and the green oil starts off in range as well because they're within these two dash marks here. As we come across time during this test, the oil is subjected to shearing stress. Remember, that's two gears coming together, uh, tight tolerances, a lot of heat, a lot of pressure. Uh, we're trying to destroy that oil. So when we look at the blue oil, he does okay until he reaches right here. He fails as soon as he crosses the bottom uh, of the SAE 90 range and the test keeps running, but he just keeps getting thinner. The red oil does it really well. He starts off in range, he drops a little bit. He comes out here, but he's still well above the floor of SAE 90. And the green oil starts off okay, but he falls out of range in less than 10 hours. So not even halfway through the test, he's already out of range and it just keeps dropping. And so when we get out here to the end, only one of these oils was able to make it through the test, and that's the red oil right here. Everybody else is down here failed. They actually failed much earlier in the test, but they just kept running to see where they were gonna get to. And that's what's happening when you get back over here in the thermal runaway circle, is imagine that you're subjecting these oils to that. You want that oil to stay in range, but as soon as it does not, you get into that circular uh, death spiral. And so I don't have any uh, brand names up here on purpose, but if you're interested in finding out about this oil that's on here on the red line, please contact me at my website, uh, Best Synthetic Oils. It's uh, www.best-synthetic-oils.com. My name is Tom Brown. I'm a certified lubrication specialist, and I can help you prevent this problem in the future. Thanks for watching.
I uh, strongly encourage you guys to go to Tom's website, uh, best th best-synthetic-oils.com. Uh, did I say that right? You did. Okay, good. Look, Tom is dedicated to helping you keep your truck running uh, absolutely as long as possible. He's a bird of the same feather as, as what, you know, PowerStrokeHelp.com. We're, you know, hand and glove type relationship that we have. You know, look, I don't know all the answers to lubrication questions or coolant questions or or differential oil type questions. I, I simply don't. And, and a lot of you guys, you send the emails to me, I just forward it straight to Tom and Tom will handle it because I he's a certified specialist. I'm a certified power truck specialist. I know how to straighten out the truck once y'all yep. break it, but he's going to help you try to keep your truck running so that you don't break it. Yeah, I so, want to keep your truck out of here. So. Yeah, but you're going to need head gaskets. You know you're going to need them. So, you know, when you look me up when the time comes. But Tom, thank you for everything you do for the power Thanks truck much. community. And uh, stay tuned, we'll, we'll have more for you. Tom's always thinking up things that are important uh, for y'all to know. So stay tuned to the channel and we'll be happy to keep feeding you information to keep your truck running. Thanks for stopping by. Also, if you're watching my videos and you're not watching them on PowerStrokeHelp.com, you're really missing where the action is. You need to go to the website PowerStrokeHelp.com and check us out because there's a lot of information on there that could be very useful to you as a Power Stroke owner to keep your truck on the road as long as possible. Remember, if you press the Arch Oil button, all the proceeds from Arch Oil uh, go to help train a vet, the nonprofit organization that I run, to help veterans ease their way back into civilian life. Thank you for all your support for making PowerStrokeHelp.com the number one stop for power stroke owners on the internet.